Um, our uh, an opening uh, presentation is by Dr. Uh, Chris Duffy is at the uh, Pennsylvania State University Department of Civil Engineering. He's an emeritus professor there, and he will give the um, opening presentation, uh, introductory presentation in hydrology. Good morning, everyone. Um, so my talk is going to involve uh, just introducing the idea and um, of the hydrology section and, and sort of what we think machine learning might mean to hydrologists. This will be quite short, just sort of an overview. First of all, I think I wanna talk about uh, what it is hydrologists do. And sort of the figure on the left gives a notion of, of sort of one kind of prediction uh, that we deal with a lot, and that is uh, catchment behavior, runoff behavior, and that sort of thing. So one way to doing that is sort of a lumped approach where the input X is whether over the entire catchment, um, uh, parameter Z that uh, uh, constitute the static uh, parameters that we might need to describe it, and uh, Y, which would be something like runoff or water quality or sediment, that sort of thing, on a sort of a lump basis or a catchment basis. The other strategy is uh, you notice the river network, and we're trying to uh, predict what we may wish to predict what's happening during a flood and a flood moves down the network. And so we need to be able to predict at, at spatial locations. And uh, also no, notice that there is an unstructured grid that can receive more spatially distributed parameter Z uh, that might go into the model. So that's sort of a very quick overview of what we would like to, we might like to predict. Um, uh, Oh, here we go. Uh, so the inputs, what are inputs? Well, weather, precip, temperature, relative humidity, wind speed, uh, those are, are the kinds of things we uh, typically have in the hydrology model. Uh, chemicals, uh, nitrates, carbon dioxide, isotopes as tracers, particulate, many other kinds of inputs. We also uh, need to have data and historical data on stream flow. Uh, we might be interested in the flood stage rather than the stream flow for flooding events and water quality isotopes as tracers when we're trying to find residence times and things like that. Uh, sediment load would be another kind of prediction. So there's a, a range of things that we have to have uh, historical records on and they can be both spatially uh, lumped over the whole catchment or they can be partitioned on a grid cell basis. Um, the Zs are the the other characteristic, and these tend to be static, not always, but they tend to be. And these are topo, topo, topographical characteristics such as elevation, relief, slope, aspect. They go into a model such as this, either in a lump sense or in a distributed sense. Stream networks, we might want to know the order of the network, uh, the, the stream density, the length, area, shape, etc., cetera, are other parameters that are useful. Uh, land cover, land use, uh, we need to know the forest coverage, either on an average uh, agriculture, urban, et cetera, uh, even on, on some kind of an average basin or basis or uh, distributed. And of course, we need to know uh, groundwater and hydrogeological components as well. Now, the idea of this uh, knowledge guide to machine learning is to now think of the uh, graph over on the right as being just a kernel of what we might be looking at where we have a set of inputs with some, perhaps one of the inputs is the static features, uh, char characteristics that are concatenated into some kind of a neural network, a GRU or LSTM, or, and then operated by linear or nonlinear transformations to predict the output. So just to give an idea. All right, so with that kind of background, uh, what are the social issues that we deal with as hydrologists, and that is, what is the motivation and context for any predictions we do? Um, well, obviously, land use change is a big one, and something like deforestation has implications for uh, CO2 in the atmosphere and, and climate change. Um, uh, it uh, also has implications that often aren't as quite well understood, uh, hydrologic implications. When we cut down the canopy of a tropical forest, uh, canopies tend to um, 
uh, intercept water and have re-evaporated. And that can be up to 40% um, of the annual rainfall. So what happens when they cut down the forest is that water, that 40%, it doesn't evaporate directly, it goes to the ground and it may often can cause uh, floods and immediate erosion, which has other implications. Uh, a lot of these secondary implications uh, we have to think about in hydrology. Uh, urbanization changes the permeability of soil, changes the water holding capability of soils. Um, and those also infl influence the water that infiltrates or the water that runs off. Um, ag agriculture uh, is another uh, thing, and obviously that's tied to the social issues of food supply. Ecosystem services are another thing that hydrologists and hydrological models uh, are utilized for. Obviously, water quality. Some of the couple of the talks today will talk about water water quality issues. Water supply, uh, drought, and floods are are, and each of these can be thought of in this sort of catchment average sense or in some kind of a distributed sense. Okay, so what, as a member of the KGML team for the last couple of years, um, <clears throat> we've had a chance to really look at the field from a domain point of view, which we each have our specialties, but also from the big data and data science points of view, which is where KGML is, has its strengths. And so here's a few of the challenges that I've noticed personally. Uh, one of the questions that we have is watershed data sparsity. In any catchment, we have lots of geospatial data these days, uh, but we often don't have many time measurements such as stream flow, flood stage. They're, they're often quite limited uh, to a few sites within any given watershed. However, um, the big data concept uh, that people have been using, there's quite a few papers on this, where one globally aggregates all the basins in the continental US or even, even uh, the whole globe, um, we aggregate and allow the, the machine learning tools to learn from other basins. And this has been quite a success, success story. And so uh, that one's already pretty well underway. So the challenge is sparse data, the KGML and some of the, and many of the, uh, uh, scientists in the field are, are tackling this one currently. Uh, heterogeneity of our parameters. Uh, there are many tools to attack this one, transfer learning. Uh, we'll see a, a talk today that talks about how random vectors can be used in, uh, to assign per, uh, parameters uh, to these aggregated basins, um, such as uh, uh, um, I can't remember the name of it right now, but, and, and also representation learn. Oh, the CAMELS data set. So uh, the CAMELS data set is one of these uh, aggregated basin studies. Um, okay, uh, multi-physics. Okay, so traditionally hydrologic models, especially spatially distributed models that bring in vegetation, topography, soil moisture, groundwater, uh, have used PDEs and ODE systems. Um, as we saw yesterday in a very interesting and enlightening talk, there are now neural ODE PDE systems that are based on either automatic differentiation or various kinds of basis functions that can be used in neural, uh, in, uh, neural network applications. And these are tremendously efficient in terms of solving these uh, very large systems of multi-physics equations. So another challenge has always been computational efficiency, and it does relate to the multi-physics models in particular, where some components of our, say, state network uh, are not uh, are very efficient in terms of computation, let's say. Or it could be also that the, the data is lacking. So one of the talks today, or a couple, two of the talks today, we'll talk about hybrid machine learning models where physical models uh, may, uh, are linked with machine learning models in order to make more efficient computation. And also there'll be one talk dealing with reduced order models. 
Uh, prediction uncertainty. There are many strategies that I've noticed, and I, obviously I'm only scratching the surface here, but Bayesian nets will be one. There's a talk uh, in this session on that uh, topic. Uh, quantile loss functions and uh, Monte Carlo dropout are a couple of other techniques that are, are used to predict uncertainty that will show promise. Uh, Science-based decision-making realizing that the social needs require uh, evidence and the evidence almost always comes back to science and it should come back to science. And so can we de develop KGML opportunities for explainable, physically consistent AI? Um, we might say neural ODE, PDEs and conservation laws are, they are very much in that vein, uh, but the hybrid uh, machine learning physical models and reduced order models would also uh, come into play there. Uh, KGML and education, we need to begin to think about how do the data science that's uh, out there and the collaboration with data science and domain scientists move to departments, uh, domains, and then uh, being stimulated by NSF, for example. And uh, finally, uh, KGML and environmental and new environmental communities. Um, AI and machine learning uh, seems, at least to me, to have great potential in, uh, in bringing water and water science and climate science uh, along with social science and resource planning. That is, can, are there tools, that, are there AI tools and machine learning tools that can support the connection between social science and resource planning and management, which is obviously an ultimate goal of the science uh, applications. Okay, so are hydrologists ready? I got to admit that often I feel like Hokusai's man in the boat approaching a, a big wave and uh, it, it's, uh, it's a challenge. And I think uh, what KGML is trying to do is to sort of get through that wave uh, in one piece. Um, at the same time, um, how, what about the, um, whoops, what about the data scientists? I mean, this is a big problem. And this is only the water part of the water cycle. What about the bio part, the social science part that actually superimposes and, and, re, and also relates to all these components? Those of us that, that have built models that do the, the water cycle simulation and have begun to attempt those things, but we need uh, data scientists to sort of help us along the way and find that great collaboration to make it work. Uh, the presentations, um, I, I, I think I've already uh, exposed uh, the, um, the, the speaker's uh, topics. And so I, I think we're going to let John just go ahead and introduce the speakers and, and, uh, and move forward uh, with the talks. So thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. 